Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Tea's Time. I'm TJ. Usually I don't film this early in the morning, but I woke up with no heat, so uh, I have an early morning project today. Uh, the reason why I woke up with no heat, I'm using a diesel heater to heat the, the whole van. Uh, this is the thermostat right here. Uh, usually when both lights are on, this means like it's below the temperature and it starts. Uh, and that's the diesel heater right here. It does a very good job of heating the van when it works. So uh, it's not the diesel heater's fault. It's just because I'm below voltage. Um, the reason why I'm below voltage is the van has been parked for like the last week just because like it's salty and snow. And if you saw the video, like when I uh, washed the van, that'll explain all that. So I've been parked in a shady spot. So if you're ever, uh, if you're ever wondering like how long can all those batteries last for, I have 10 uh, lithium batteries, uh, 2000 amp hours. Uh, it can last a week. Because right now, if you could pick up right there, it's at uh, 11.6 volts. And on the battery, 11.6, 90%, low battery lights flashing. Uh, I try to keep the batteries. I don't like them to drop below 12 volts. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of preserved that. I shut off the, the isolator. Like, even if I turn that on, it just will blink the low battery. I have the lights dimmed a little bit so I still can see in here, but I just don't want to, I want to preserve them. Uh, so in order to get everything back online and operational, uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, options. <laughs> so we can either, we need the sun. I need my, uh, extension cord to plug into the shore power, like the RV extension cord that I have. Or run the, the diesel engine and use the battery isolator to get everything, like, charged. Um, or at least, like, charged to a point where, like, it'll, like be over the 12 volt point but i don't have any of the three because uh my uh the sun isn't up right now it's about six in the morning it's uh 20 something degrees outside in the van right now it's about like 50 ish i'm a little bundled up because i know the temperatures are going to keep dropping because today's going to be a cold day so i either need uh the sun my rv extension cord or the battery isolator none of those are working the isolator like it still clicks but like something's been messed up with it where it hasn't been connecting through like to connect like the start battery versus like the coach batteries it hasn't been connecting uh so i need to take that apart to figure out like why that's not working because like it still makes like the noise like the, the every 15 minutes like tight cycle for it to like to charge and disconnect and then charge and disconnect it still cycles through but it's just not making a contact so i think something inside it's just not connecting where it should be so the best option for me right now since the sun's not up and it's been low light because i'm in the shade it's it's not gonna really like charge as fast as like if i start the motor or if i have my extension cord so uh, lessons to be learned, Carry, keep your extension cord, because my uh, RV extension cord is in storage, and I shouldn't have waited till I needed my battery isolator to fix it. So uh, that's where we're at today. It's early, get my little breakfast in, I'm milk, some honey nut Cheerios, some OJ, and I'm gonna eat some fruit. So I'm gonna get this stuff situated, but I just wanna do a quick little uh, intro to the video, what we're doing today. Uh, we're trying to get the batteries over 12 volts, and if like just an update of like, how long can your batteries last? So one week, minimum sun, it's in the winter time. So like the sun doesn't reach like the highest point in the winter time either. And then being in the shade doesn't help. So uh, yeah, that's uh, what we're working on today. So when I do drive it, it is in a, like a sunny spot. So like I haven't had any issues. Like I haven't plugged in since before like I moved. And that's been like, we've been going for like a few months now without like, completely off grid no uh electrical source outside source other than the solar panels so we've been good but like we live and we learn so like now i know like it could go uh, a week and that was with me just running like the fridge the fridge going the inverter on like that drains some and then just using the lights and having the tv on just using that stuff like regular like that's just with that stuff so like i do have a space heater I, I haven't been using that because like if I did use that like the batteries would have been like drained it just it just pulls too much uh so the diesel heater's been doing its job just you know it's it's good it keeps me warm but uh just with the tv the lights the fridge and the inverter draining uh that's like a week and that wasn't even like when it was fully charged I think it was like the batteries are like 86 percent uh so uh we're good for a week 
like if I had a hundred percent charge, I just would say like I'm good for like a week with normal use. And yeah, but let me get into fixing the inverter or not the inverter, the battery isolator. It's the lithium, uh, what is it, two five five or something like that. Uh, we're gonna take that out. I'm gonna see if I could crack that open, see what's going on, uh, get that installed, and uh, get the the motor started. And that should charge, and then hopefully, like, the sun will come out. But, like, right now, I even have, like, uh, snow is on the, the solar panels right now. I don't know if we'll be able to, like, pick it up. Like, snow's covering the solar panels right now, and it fr froze last night. So, like, that's probably not going to be the best source of uh, energy today. So, isolator time. Enough talking. Let's go. All right. First order of business is to gain access to the battery isolator. Uh, it's behind this. Uh, so I just have to remove some screws, take that off, and then remove the battery isolator. Uh, when working with electrical, uh, make sure you disconnect your power. Uh, just be safe. And uh, I don't know if you really could pick up. It's a little icy out there. Uh, but I'm going to get that removed. See what's up with the battery isolator so we can get this thing uh, thrown back in. And hopefully I can fix the battery isolator. Um, yeah, it sounds like it's working. It's just not making a contact. So I think there's like a little servo arm or something in there where it clicks and it, like it rotates on and off. So I think something's up with the on and off. So uh, let's get that out, get that taken apart and look at it. All right, now that we have this out, this is the battery isolator. Uh, it looks like it had some heat going through. Like, I don't know like if I just have uh, too much amps going through this or it just got overworked. All I know, it was locked in like the on position for like a while, which isn't good like for your alternator. Uh, but like I just let it run and then eventually it disconnected. Uh, so to take this apart, it looks like it's just uh, five Phillips screws on the back of that. So uh, let's get this taken apart and take a look on the inside. See if we can get this thing to work again. All right. So inside of the isolator, you have like this little up and down piston that actuates a roller system like so and then that looks like it should turn this it looks like a copper like washer it should probably turn that to make it contact the two terminals together you got your battery chassis and then the coach it should connect those when it turns and then every time it clicks it rotates to disconnect connect disconnect connect but let's see if we could get leave that alone get that out and see what's going on well, let's this pops off like so and It's like something's like it's broke like right there it looks like there's probably like a piece that's supposed to somehow connect this uh copper washer to this which is supposed to spin it but it looks broken and you see all like the pieces of plastic coming off of it Yeah, got cooked in there. See all that right there? That. Okay, so inside it appears like this part right here. That's a plastic piece, like a northern copper colors just transfer um, like material uh, and these are the contact points so on the bottom of this uh, copper washer there's like a wave uh, so like when it turns it's on it turns it off so uh yeah so the only issue that I'm seeing is uh it looks like this little uh 
piece, whatever is like a plastic piece that got hot and it's not connected where it needs to be connected. Cause like this will sit on top like so. And then like, as this spins, it's, it's supposed to spin this, but like, that's not going on. That's not happening. And yeah, so like that sits like, so this will connect like on this and like it will spin at the same time but the piece it looks like a plastic piece is broken it melted just i guess got too hot so yeah so like this is trash like i might need to switch to just like a, a solenoid where i can press the button to connect something like a little heavier duty uh that just being constructed of uh plastic like when it got hot it just uh disintegrated uh so like if that was made out of like metal we should be fine we would have been fine and then it like it's supposed to click on and off like every 15 minutes to let the alternator cool but like it needs to probably turn off however long to let itself cool off because like everything else like mechanically seems like it, it works like the it still actuates it still does what it's supposed to do but just for that piece breaking off that little uh the, like the copper washer it's a uh, pretty much it forced it to stop like it was stuck in the on position and then it just got stuck to the off position so like i probably prefer to be stuck on the off position just so it doesn't like overheat overdo like the alternator so i got to figure that out like i don't know if i should just try to rig this up so that way like i could get like some juice in here but like the sun is starting to come up I, I go based off of the surge protector like when those little led lights turn on it's getting a little bit of sun but on the solar charge controller it's still showing like zero amps and then we're at 11.5 volts uh so if the sun comes out today we should be up to 12 but i just won't be i should probably just cut off the inverter and not use like the fridge like it's cold enough outside where i could take that stuff and put it like in the the cab like if i'm not driving it like it's it's cold so like that should be fine, but uh, I need to figure out what I want to do with this. Uh, should I just try to, there's really no saving that. Like the only option I could think of is putting a screw through it, but then no, like that won't work. Let me, let me play with this a little bit and then like, we'll see or I'll decide what I'm going to do. But uh, yeah, so at least we know the problem. Like I know it wasn't working. Like I could hear it like click on and off. So like everything was like doing what it's supposed to do except for like making the contact. So uh, yeah, let me play with this and see what's up. Yeah, so uh, that's trash. Um, I'm about to look into like a different like solenoid, like relay. Something that's probably a little bit more uh, stronger than what I have here. Like that's probably good like if you have maybe like a couple batteries like two maybe four but uh like i have 10 and all i know is like when the lithium like they're charging they're just uh there's very low resistance when they're charging so like it pulls like heavy so like it might have just been a little too much for that to handle uh but like i can't do anything with that like if i want to to like rig it up i could take a like a bolt and uh like connect the two terminals but like that would be a continuous like connection like i don't want that like because then like each battery like the starting battery versus the chassis battery they could affect each other whether that's uh charging or draining uh so like being able to like disconnect and connect is a good thing uh so i just have to figure that out i'm thinking about just looking up online for like a relay like something that i could connect and disconnect uh automatically would be cool but like if db i'll probably have to hit the button and like what i'm doing like if i'm in town like i'm doing like 15 minute drive here or there uh like I just turn it on like when i start and like turn it off but also like something that senses would be cool like i would be nice just to like hook it up and not have to think about it until like it breaks like <laughs> like that uh that would be cool but uh let me um uh, i'm gonna do some research but like i need to go actually just get like the extension cord my rv extension cord and like plug in i'm uh currently parked in my sister's uh driveway so i'm uh steal some electricity uh after i ask to steal some electricity and uh, contribute to that electrical bill just so i could get like this charged up i just uh yeah we need to have like the heat going in here especially like with the batteries you don't want your batteries to get below freezing uh, so like that's something else to consider 
But uh, yeah, I might need to actually go do that now before I even go start my day because the temperature is like constantly probably dropping in here. It is currently, let's see how cold it is, uh, via the battery temperature uh, sensors. Let's see, open up the uh It is, where are you? Let's see the temperature for the batteries. That's what I'm concerned about. I just don't want them like to get below freezing. It is currently 50 degrees in here right now. Uh, so uh, that's no heat. That's just the leftover heat from <laughs> like yesterday. Uh, so uh, I should probably do that before I even like begin like my day. I should get on that. So uh, yeah, let me go check on getting that uh, uh, cable, the RV cable to plug into the shore power and uh, get some uh, juice going through this. Just even like enough for uh, the charge uh, just to get the, the diesel heater going because like I don't need to actually have like the isolator on. Uh, that's for like convenient stuff like uh tv fridge the fridge like i need but like it's so cold like i just put like i don't have a lot of stuff in the fridge i could just put that stuff out there uh in the cab and like that should be fine uh but just to get some juice in get some sun get it like charged back up at least if i get like a full charge on it like charge it for like a day or two uh, I could disconnect and just be good for like the week and like probably just start driving this thing around some more just so it gets like it's sunlight. But uh, that's where we're at. So uh, stay tuned. I don't know. Stay tuned for the cable. Or should I just call it a video right now? Like. Yeah. So stay tuned. I'm going to go get the cable and uh, get this thing uh, connected up. Uh, just get some juice in here. If I could get out because the door's probably fr frozen shut. So I probably can't leave. I got to climb out a window or something. But yeah, let's figure this out. Right. So today's a little bit of a dilemma day. So I made the attempt to leave the van to go get the cable that I need so I could plug in. But uh, the door's actually kind of frozen shut right now. Pulling on it, it doesn't do anything. Uh, so I'm gonna try to put some uh, Rain-X bug remover. What does it say? Mm. Actually, that says for over 32 degrees, it's below that right now. So um, do I have anything I could, I don't know don't want to do that but uh currently stuck in the van i could crawl out the window and probably go through the back door to get in after i look put the lift gate down uh that could be an option but like currently frozen in uh i don't want to rig up like i could just uh jump like those two uh terminals together to just get like the voltage through like to charge uh but like it's going to be a gloomy kind of day so like we're not even going to get like a lot of sun enough sun to actually get like juice in here uh so the quickest option right now or the safest option would be just to go get the the cable I need out of storage and uh get that plugged in and that would be like instantaneous we'll have juice be able to operate whatever we need to operate at that point but uh it's just a matter of getting to uh storage getting out the van cuz I am blocked in uh, that could be solved, but like just a matter of getting out of the van right now. So that's where we're at. Uh, so out the window we go. Uh, I just need to make sure I bring my lift gate cable. Uh, the voltage is low, so I'm hoping I just get it just enough to get it off the latch so I could drop it down. And then I could just uh, climb up to go through the back door. But where is... The cable's over there.
and I made it. Uh, so the lift gate, it, it opened, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, but we're still frozen, so now I'm gonna just go and get my uh, cord, get this plugged in, uh, so that way we can get some uh, heat going in here just so we don't have like freezing temperatures for the batteries. And then we can worry about ordering a solenoid relay, something to replace that. So uh, yeah, that's where we're at, but you'll see me at storage, getting the cable, we'll get this plugged in, we'll get some juice going, and we should have some heat. I need it. So that's the missing link right there. Uh, this is so we can plug in the shore power. Uh, it's just very overcasty like today. Like we're not gonna get a lot of sun. And then the battery isolator is broke. So uh, we had options, <laughs> uh, but none of them were actually working. Like this is the only option that like I can make work right now uh, to get this thing uh, back in, back up and running, uh, just so we can keep the batteries from uh, freezing up. Uh, so I'm gonna go back and get this plugged in. Uh, we're gonna get some juice. We're gonna get some heat going. Uh, we'll be good for uh, today And then I'll just have to decide on the relay that I want to use I have to just do some research and just find one order one uh, Install one so that way like it's gonna probably be like a solenoid relay isolator So I just need something a little bit more heavy-duty like that isolator worked when it was working uh, But like it didn't really last like too long uh, just probably just I got a lot of juice running through uh, the van And even just like the charging of the lithium batteries uh, It probably was just a little too much for that that isolator. So I need something a little bulkier uh, That one was rated for uh, was it 200? 225 amps so uh if i could find something that's like double that like we should probably be good and not just have to like just research and just figure out which one and then just order that and we should be straight but uh we'll get back to the van i'm gonna go actually probably get some cocoa and <laughs> we'll be back at the van so see you in a bit All right, first things first, let's see if we can actually get into the van. We got some uh, windshield washer fluid, de-icer. And nope. So I'm just gonna, I should probably pour this from the inside out, but uh, 
Yeah, we just gotta try to get this unstuck. It'll be easier. Now I'm just gonna pour it from the inside out. So that way it can kind of get down into the seams and help uh, unlock this door. And de-icing time. Uh, right now, I'm just going to see if I could get this uh, door unfrozen. I made a store run. I got my uh, the cord that I'm going to need, uh, the, the shore shoreline cord. I got that. I got this uh, de-icer right here. I got my cocoa. Uh, it, was, it was funny. I went to the first place where I get my uh, cocoa from, and they didn't have power <laughs> today either. Uh, so I had to go to another spot. And I got my cocoa, got that situated. But right now, let's uh, see if we get this unfrozen. I plan on just pouring the wish washer uh, de-icer like down along like the seams. And hopefully like it should fill in and we'll be able to get that un unstuck. And then I also uh, got some like some uh, silicone. So like when this does get free, I'm going to spray like the silicone in there just so we could kind of prevent this from happening in the future because this is the second time like the door's frozen up on me like before it froze up where i could open it to about like this point right here but uh it, now it's like i can't even open it at all uh, so let me throw some ice uh de-icer down there and let's see if we get this unstuck So this is what I was doing like last time, like it got stuck to this point and like I don't want to force it because like there's rollers and stuff in there. We don't want to damage that. Uh, so we're not going to force it. But I think it's like the bottom, the bottom track is the one that's getting caught. It starts like right there. Uh, so it's probably just like in the track itself, like there's probably like ice buildup. Uh, so like that needs to thaw, but like once it thaws, like I'm going to spray like silicone up in like the tracks and stuff like that. Uh, just to keep this uh, from happening before because like you got to go somewhere I don't want to be jumping out the window like every time I need to go somewhere uh, So I'm gonna let this thaw out. Uh, we're gonna get our uh, Cable hooked up so we can get some power in here so we can get heat going so it doesn't get like below freezer temperatures back there in the in the cab Not in the cab, but like in the what is it the the chassis area the living area Whatever you want to call it. We got to make sure that doesn't get below freezing just for the batteries uh, so let's get this plugged in, and yeah, we should go from there. Yeah, not going to force it. And it's open. So right now we just have to hook up. This is the shore power, 125, 250 volt, 50 amp. Uh, surge protector is back there. Uh, there's a delay on the surge protector. I believe it's like a minute and a half or something like that before it clicks over. That's just to protect uh, like the power coming in. If like this wired wrong or whatever, we can protect the electrical. 
So right now, I have a bunch of adapters. We don't need these adapters, but I'm gonna have to end up like building something to house like the like the cord because like we need it now just to be on the safe side like i need to build a spot for it to actually just live inside the van for like emergencies like this situation right now We're like that set up, but that dry a little bit. I'm not gonna like show you me putting like silicone on it, but it's just spraying like in the channels on the top and the bottom, uh, just to make sure like it gets all like the moisture out and just keep it from freezing up so it still slides and uh, operates how it's supposed to. So inside we have that plugged in. Uh, the surge protector uh, it has a delay on it, just checking stuff and before it puts, sends power through. So turn this on, we have low battery, and then you have to wait. Until we hear a thud, and we do have like a little bit of solar power coming in right now, which is nice. Uh, but it's not quite enough to get the diesel heater going. Uh, so we're just gonna wait for uh, the surge protector to kick in to check the power. And on the like the shore side, that cord, there's like a green light and that little thud. I don't know if you quite heard it, but like it just clicked over. Uh, so right now, that's on. Let's see. It should start getting some juice through. There's the grid. So that's the grid side right there. So that's what we're taking in. Uh, and if you do have like an inverter like this, you can set like the limits uh, for how much like it pulls. Like I have it set down to like a 15 amp, like a regular house outlet. So like we don't overdo like the outlet and just to be on the safe side. So like I could pull more, but it depends on like the outlet that you have. But I have it set for 15 just to be on the safe side. So right now is, is juicing up the batteries right now. It's doing its job. So right now we're just gonna hang out. We're gonna wait for it to go up. It's already up, what, 0 0.2 volts. It was at like 11.5, 11.5, it's at 11.7 right now. So I need to get it to 12 volts at least to get stuff going inside of the van right now. But uh, yeah, so uh, that was my inconvenience today, waking up a little nippy. Uh, like oh like am I out of diesel or <laughs> is the bat or is the batteries uh, just too low so the batteries are just too low and I didn't do like like I tried to have backup plans to like if anything happened like with the batteries if they lost their charge like with the sun like in the solar panels they're kind of covered with snow like I have to climb up top and just uh, like scrape the ice off of those just so I could get some sunlight but there's not even like enough sun for it to actually like do anything significant significantly charge anything significantly anything it, the solar panels can't significantly charge the batteries in the state that they're at right now with the ice covering it uh so that and then the isolator also uh this is like trash uh it's not trash like if i could order like this mechanism right here I can refurbish this like this is still perfectly good it's operational like it's good but uh just like the little uh, plastic piece that rotates this disc it, it just melted or snapped it just got overused too hot so uh like I could try to just reach out to try to see if I could just get that part alone and I could refurbish that and then I could just uh sell it or get rid of it or whatever because it's still it's still good like everything electronically of about the, the setup it works it's just I think like I just have too much juice like flowing through like that isolator where it was just too much for it to handle and it just burnt up uh so i'm just gonna find a, a better stronger one uh because like we live and we learn you know like gave it a shot it didn't really quite work out and we could see like the fault in it like if i ordered another one it's just gonna end up doing the same thing like so i'm not even gonna buy that i'm just gonna get something else to switch up the electrical system uh and if you're on the risky side like in a in a pinch 
you could just jump those together like i don't know if you had like some jumper cables or something but just to kind of get some juice through it but just make sure you have like a properly gauged like set of wires and just take that into consideration or you could just put a bolt through like the little connectors that i had like that should also work but uh yeah we got uh juice is going juice is going Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. We're up to 11.8 volts. So we're getting there. We're getting there pretty quick. And we're just going to do enough just so we can get it, like, charged back up. I'm not going to keep it plugged in. I just want to charge it up. Like, i probably, like, try to get, like, a, a somewhat decent charge on it right now. But, like, I'm not just going to continuously keep it hooked up, like, for weeks at a time. I just want to get juice in now. And then hopefully I start driving the van again. Like, when the temperature and, like, the, the road salt and stuff clears up, like, a little bit hoping within like a week or so like i should get that situated uh but yeah thank you for tuning in today uh thank you for uh checking us out and just kind of being curious of like how how much uh battery life i have or how long the batteries will last uh before like they're they're drained like to this point right now with the inverter there's a shut off where like if it gets to 12 volts that pretty much stops doing like its inverter business of like running the refrigerator and stuff like that and then for the diesel heater that's on 12 volts but for itself uh like if it gets below it just there's not enough to crank crank it up it's pretty much like a, it's, a, it's a diesel motor it's a diesel heater like it needs like it's uh it's glow and everything just like a diesel engine that runs the truck or the van so it's the same thing same principle but like it just wasn't enough to run that it, the inverter shut down it, like it did what it's supposed to do i have it set to shut down like the voltage gets too low which it did and it just that's just to like save like the batteries too like you could get them all the way down to like a zero like you could run them down down but it's not really the best practice to continuously keep like draining your batteries like to zero so like the save point i think is what is it believe I believe it's between like 50 between 50 80 percent ish if you keep within that range it's cool like the batteries they've been staying like around 86 ish that was like normal like when i was getting sun and stuff like that even with the the isolator not working properly it was still like enough to keep it like in a nice little range where like i didn't have to worry like i wasn't worried about it until like yesterday i was like it's at like i think it was at 12.5 when i went to sleep and i'm like i don't know if it's enough like to make it through the night but uh we didn't make it through the night well enough for me to like wake up and i'm like it's a little nippy like usually i'm warm but like it was just telltale signs from that so that's how i started my day but like i guess that's just motivation to do something with myself for today but yeah we're all set we're done bada boom bada bing we got our cable we got our cocoa uh we got some uh de-icer for the door the door is open and now i just have to figure out the isolator so that'll be like a later date whenever i figure that out we'll do a video of me like getting that hooked up and installed and that situated but uh thank you for checking me out so until next wednesday so until next wednesday uh be mindful of what you consume <laughs> don't let people and things drain you of your energy i'll see you next week peace tj